Braden Shepherd podcast episode 63, I want to say. Correct me if I'm wrong. 63, yes. All right, cool. So, um, we've got it kind of in the building. Um, thank you for joining us today. Lots to discuss. Um, tell the people about yourself. and um, I'll let the boys introduce themselves. Cool. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, my name's Ikran and I am a BTS fan, as you guys know, and <laughs> I'm listening at BuzzFeed News. <laughs> I don't know what else I can say about myself, I'm not going to lie, but yeah. Well, that's fine. Iman, introduce yourself. Hi, people. My name is Emmanuel. I'm um, Iman G45. Yeah. All right. He's, he's not playing ball today, is he? Colin. Nope. <laughs> nope. Uh, Colin Sanusi, uh, Big 2L, a.k.a. Don Corleone, a.k.a. Cool Con Collected. You know what it is? Yeah. In the building. Love it. <laughs> Demi, a.k.a. Two Dems, a.k.a. The real is back. The real is back. Um, uh, so, Ikran, just a little bit of back story. We had a game show on our Instagram Live yesterday. It was a huge success. Thank you to everyone who joined Billy Man of the Match. I've not laughed that hard in a long time. But Emmanuel was not happy with the questions he received. Um, specifically, one about what's, what's the most popular drink from Scotland? Now, the answer was Iron Brew. I think that's a general, that's a common... I wouldn't have known fact. that. I wouldn't have known that, to be honest with you. Yeah, I've never had it. That. I don't know. I thought... So, so it's, it's not just me, is it? You're saying it's a common drink because if everybody knows. It's common, but people in the comments are saying as, as, people know. As if it's common, like the name it Elizabeth on, on, on the piece of paper. Let's not argue in front of our guests. Come on. Let's have <laughs> no, it's fine. Carry on. Have some decorum, <laughs> guys. Come on. Fine. <laughs> I'm not usually Actually, like this, but yeah. <laughs> he's he's heated about that. Now, nah, I feel you. Next one, we'll do another one. I'll ask you. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Seen as believing, I get it, I get it. All right, Clan. So I wanted to start with your biggest passion. Um, so first topic for today, I guess the two topics that we'll discuss kind of go hand in hand a bit. But I want to start off by talking about BTS because I know that's a massive thing for you. I don't know too much about them, but I know the fandom is huge. You're Remember part of the ar- you're part of the army. I am. No way. Twenty million. How get- bigger? How did, how did you get into it? Um, so it was actually before they were a thing. So my sister was just going through YouTube watching like dance choreography videos. Mm. And she watched one of theirs. And because we already liked K-pop and Korean hip-hop and stuff, we just got lost on their YouTube channel of like covers and stuff like that. And we started following them from then. So it was like 2013. And then later mm. on that year, they released actual music by themselves so it was, a, it was a bit of a gamble liking them before the music came out but mm. so what they've been what they've been rubbish i know we did just... worry about that <laughs> <laughs> but the covers were actually really good so like, it would have been very hard to mess up they're one of like the biggest artists in the world aren't they now like they're massive quite escaped yeah. them massive. number one singles in the hot 100 them boys aren't playing <laughs> like i there's seven of them, isn't it? Am I yeah. correct in saying? Yes. How do they all show their personality? Because this is my biggest thing. Like, this is what confuses me the most. Um, They have so many forms of content. Like, since mm. they've started, they've had all these reality shows, which you can think of as, like, say on YouTube, and there's, you know, those YouTuber houses, and they have all those, like, mm. games and stuff they play. So in a similar way, but, like, on a more professional level, on TV shows, they'd have, like, 10 episode long shows where they do, like, competitions between themselves and they compete for really silly and petty things like a rice cooker or <laughs> going home <laughs> early <you> and <laughs> and just like seven boys just going up against each other really hard like arguing and fighting and messing about and joking so yeah is, is this a question that might get you in trouble with the fandom who's your favorite it won't get me in trouble it's just i find it hard to pick a favorite is it like picking mm, is it like how people say ah oh, it's picking your favourite children. Kind of, except them my age. <laughs> <laughs> Ikram, what do you think about like like the K-pop industry in general? Like how they the process is very different to like you know the usual type of um, 
like bringing up a start it's quite more like regimented isn't it like they get put mm. into groups somewhat to some degree like how do you feel like that's like um, I think, is it a successful thing you think um so bts was slightly different than that it was like a friends finding people and then someone professional got involved so it's a slightly different setup yeah but the general scene it's it can be intense but i guess it's kind of like signing up to do a sport and being mm. put in a group and then you work mm. together towards a common goal yeah. and you train from like a young age and you just go through all of this like schooling and then training yeah. musically so it's i guess it's really intense because one of our friends shouts out to vincent he was into tay yang i want to say and i was like a bang. big bang isn't it yeah yeah, 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 yeah. and like the the story of how they all come together is mad it's like basically you're gonna be a star and this is how we're gonna do it it's a lot more i don't know how to do it. it's there's there's real artist development as in if they see you and they like you that's yeah. it it's clear like they're sorting you out for the rest of your life which is interesting that i guess uh bts didn't necessarily go that way but it seems more organic yeah it uh, was because in comparison to Taeyang, yeah. he would have had a massive company backing him. Yeah. So there's more money being pushed into him to be... Which makes sense. I guess, I don't know. It's just interesting to see how like these artists develop and how they do things differently um, and the success that that brings. But yeah, I would like to try... If I could be in there, do you think I'd go unnoticed? Um, no. Uh, I thought this is my chance to be part of BTS. I really like those boys. I'm not gonna lie. I can't, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna hold you. I'm not gonna lie. Um, whenever they try to have black people in K-pop, it doesn't always go well in those groups. <laughs> Say word. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Someone to just do the give drop a quick sixteen and that's it. He bounces. That's his. That's his one job to give I'm the back. There is a girl group. Literally, they got her from Belgium. She's a black girl. Mm. Um, she raps and then that's it. And then she's back. Damn. Hey, you know what? Do your job and then do it well, well isn't it? She yeah. like um she like Lil Fizz and B2K. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, it's it maybe a bit more intense than that, because obviously she still has to like dance and look pretty for the whole three four minutes. Yeah, but it's it's similar to B2K because Amarian was always the guy singing who was the part man and then the other guys were just Yeah, there. they have assigned roles like Yes, there's a person who's there to be very pretty. There's someone to sing, or like one or two to sing, and then there's dancers, and then there's everyone has their own talent that All they right. push out. Put us on to, put us on to oh. them. So, how, what's the role for BTS? So, I don't know, what's one person's job? What's another person's job? Because I know it's like, it's even sort of supposed to represent like a family. So, one of them's supposed to be viewed as like, oh, the little brother sort of character that everyone's like, oh, He's so nice in the corner, you know what I mean? I mean... In the corner. In the corner? <laughs> no, nah, none of them will sit in the corner. But um, he interviewed like that. He's born 97. His name is Jungkook. Mm. But um, he is, like, super talented in everything. He directed the latest music video. Jeez. So um, I think their roles, like, musically, aren't mm. as clear-cut. But okay. They all have like their own talents on the side that they put into the work. Okay, that makes sense. I only ask because I saw a um, an interesting documentary on Netflix about K-pop, and uh, I think it was part of their. Um, I'm sorry. The Vox one. I think so. Yeah, and it's part of like the series that they have on how stuff happened, and it's really interesting how K-pop started. It was a, a group of three boys who are really inspired by like 90s hip-hop, um, even wore their attire. Like, they looked like a 90s hip-hop band, but they, they were dope. Like, they were good at what they did. But it's just interesting to see um, how it's progressed. But it is, it goes back to them being quite manufactured and someone has to play that role and that's what they do um, within the band. What do you think of, like, their, comp I don't want to say competition, but the others, like, Blackpink is another one, isn't it? Um, I feel like they're completely, because they're girls, Mm. the audience and the fields that it's really weird because like with boy groups and girl groups the fandoms are so different mm. but sometimes they do um like they clash. do overlap but okay. it's just they have so different 
they don't really compete against each other in that sense. Okay. Whenever they release music, it's, it hasn't been on the same day yet. They haven't right. had a chance to actually compete like that in Ooh. the current mainstream at their level. Hmm. But um, yeah, I think it's something that's day. actively avoided, I'm not going to lie. Because <laughs> the internet will break. It's not even the internet. I think it's just too much drama in the industry because right. all the channels there are going to compete to get everybody each person okay, that, it's just it will become unequal and unfair at some point mm. all right so mm. my question it's just very interesting how the stand culture works for these groups and just works in general so i mean recently they your bts were nominated for a grammy isn't it yes and all it kind of did was just like tweet out just excitement that's the only way i can put it and then underneath the tweet, if you check the replies, it's just everyone else going mad because they're so happy that um, they've been nominated. It's like a real family. And these guys are just gassed that these guys have been nominated. Is there a bad side to stand culture, which you've seen? Um, a bad side? Yeah, I think every fandom has a bad side. Mm. Um, now more than ever, I feel, because everybody's at home. And mm. I, I have noticed it being a lot more racial because of Black Lives Matter, like the racists have just like jump out. Mm. But, um, yeah, there's a lot of messiness that happens. Mm. Have you man seen any bad things go on within stand culture that you just think, yo, this is gross? I think the commentation of being a stand in itself has some negative attributes purely because I guess maybe standhood can also allude to the fact that you might see the artist is doing no wrong. Whereas obviously we've seen in ple- like numerous situations, you know, these people are human and they're not, you know, above, you know, what people can, like people do wrong all the time. So mm. when there's like a scandal, if, you know, you're a stand of someone, you're going to defend them to the death. But, you know, if it was somebody you didn't like, you, you're not have you're not holding them to the same regard. So mm. stand culture is, it can be toxic. And obviously, you know, if, there's an award for someone and, not some, and another artist doesn't win it, like we were talking about with The weekend stuff or going to talk about it with The weekend stuff, mm. it can get really, like, you know, petty. Yeah, it can. Agreed. Rude, like, you know, really rude, so. That, that is the massive downside, I guess, is the fact that it can become so toxic and not a place you want to be in. Like, you just see when something happens, these guys are just ready to go at it for nothing, like, over nothing sometimes. And it's ridiculous to watch. The artists themselves are just looking at it like, you know, what can I even do? I'm not I, even really even a part of this. It. Nah, <laughs> it's that's just... true, you know. I, I can see if, if one of the artists said, oh, let's just all get along. I can see the stands being like, shut up, we're batting for you. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm sure that's happened cool. before. I'm definitely sure that's yeah. happened to someone. Ariana <laughs> always gets involved. Really? Does she? Yeah. And what's she saying to her fans? Um, I think there was like something happening with like a group of people going against like these three or four black girls and then mm. she got involved and kind of like defended them and then everybody else turned on the people who went after the girls so it, <laughs> it, it was just like it didn't help but then she was like can you guys please stop just, just get along <laughs> that does sound like something ariana would do she seems like yo i don't want any violence because that happened to Kate Perry. Kate Perry was like, oh, yeah, you guys need to chill. <laughs> and then you all were, like, commenting, more, like, shut up, like, we're, we're defending you. And then she just backed out of it and said, I'm going to let you guys do you. Yeah, I, I, think it's, I think it's kind of crazy because at the end of the day, um, me, I view things from, like, a very, like, religious point of view. So mm. I feel like when it comes to stand culture, really and truly, it's just idol worship like on a heavy massive level um some people are just they always just see the favorite artist and like yeah that's my favorite artist i'm gonna sing along to the lyrics whenever mm. i go there but i'm not gonna be obsessed living and breathing about that individual like one of my favorite artists is Pusha T. me and collins we went to a Pusha T concert i have a pair of shoes that he's i have well two pairs of shoes um two tapes of his but I'm I'm not sitting there worshiping him every day. Do you get what I'm saying? Like praying, yeah. commenting, liking it, every it single picture, every single post. If anybody says anything about Pusha T, I'm gonna come gun for them. Do you get what I'm saying? It's, yeah. I have my own it can life. Become to- yeah, I agree. I've and I thing. think it with can- stand culture, it's very much a demographic thing. So it starts from teenage years, where you know 
you don't have much responsibility. You don't have much to think about, you know, other than school and come back home. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, so then it just becomes intense. And then if you still have that sort of stand and desire, then it just gets worse and worse and worse. So then it just it evolves into something else. So as I said, yeah. worship. And then if anybody goes against it, it's like, you must die. Mm. keyboard <laughs> <laughs> I agree no you're right yeah it can become something that can become very unhealthy and we've seen yeah. it and as you know Eminem depicted very well in that song which is where the phrase actually comes from I get what you're saying like it has become something that some for some people has been has become a very unhealthy borderline obsession so I guess it's just one of those things like you can have your favourite artist that like we all do but it's just how you approach it and how you go about your interactions with that artist per se like you know it shouldn't they shouldn't be the be all and end all and then i think the most important thing is if you can see that when they do something wrong you're able to acknowledge it i think that's the most important thing but it's just a very interesting part of what has become pop culture really have you guys ever been like a part of something where you almost been a stan or maybe a borderline stan what's the one thing you'd say you've been that close to i mean ikran i'm assuming yours is probably bts or... um, i started off as a harry potter stan and then really bieber, then it was justin bieber i was really into justin bieber you're a believer yeah yo it's not a bad choice you know shout out to him <laughs> one of our closest friends was a believer back in the day i think she might still be to some degree i think yeah low key i don't think she'd say it if you asked her but i think <laughs> Yeah, she still is. Bieber Valley, man. That's my guy. Bieber Valley. <laughs> but the boy makes good music. I'm not going to hate. <laughs> um, for me, I was really heavy on Captain Conan when we were a lot younger, especially when they came out at first and they were more or less a lot more underground. Um, not as big a fan of them now. Uh, <sighs> nowhere near. But yeah, I was... That's, that's someone I could say. That was a group of people... Uh, that group I was very interested in. Carl, I'm guessing yours is Drake. Yeah, I was really like I was a very big fan at, at the beginning stage, like really big fan. Mm. And then, as you know, like after like views and stuff, it, it kind of tailed off a little bit for me. Like I mm. kind of saw through a lot of his nonsense. I mean, I'm still a fan now. Don't get me wrong, but mm. that's probably probably mine if I had to pick. Yeah. Yeah, and the week say. and the weekend to some degree, but yeah, still a fan. Do you know what the week? There's I swear there's cracking after hours, man. That album is so good. Yeah, we'll, we should get into it. But Iman, what's yours? Um, I've never really... Well, I don't think I've been a stan. Like, maybe maybe a fan of... Um, actually, yeah, no, no. Maybe a G-Unit fan. Yeah. Um, young. You and Amar. Yeah, no, definitely. Because Amar put me on. Shout out to Amar. Amar definitely put me on to that. Um, G-Unit. Then from June it went into went to Kanye West because at one point I had more Kanye West songs than I had with Fifty Cent G Unit and I was kind of mm. confused. Mm-hmm. I was like mm, maybe I have to look at Kanye West a bit different. Then the whole Illuminati thing came through. I was like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah. Then and then it became Pusha T because I didn't really understand the diff- like what was going on between Pusha T and Lil Wayne. Mm. And then the the song Exodus Twenty Three, like it was just a, it was just like who's this guy? And then I just kept listening to his songs, and it was just that like, it just became a fan from that point. So I think right mm. now I'm a fan, very much a fan of Pusha T. Then it's anything. a good choice, man. Yeah, rapper of the year for 2018, I think it was. So good choice. Didn't get uh, it, but he was. Yeah, that was. His he, it was definitely, definitely. Yeah, hundred percent. I don't think anyone could agree with that. All right, so I think we're all. Well, I know I am. I'm disappointed and shocked. Uh, Weekend has been completely, I don't know what the word is, I'm going to say uh, locked out or blocked out of this year's Grammys. Um, Not a single nomination. Um, He's put it down to the fact that uh, he isn't willing to perform um, with them on come this week. He wasn't willing to perform for them and he's opted to perform for the, what's it called, Super Bowl. So I just think this is crazy. I don't know how After Hours or even singles off of that album haven't been nominated. Uh, a, you know what? The thing is, um, as a fan, right, it's quite funny because 
his first project, you know, arguably is his best for me. Mm. And then um, he went on like a bit of like a pop tirade where he was, you know, kind of making a little bit more consumer heavy songs. Mm. Um, and he won Grammys for those. So like, I think he won Grammys for like The Hills or I'm not sure what the other one is, Can't Feel My Face, Starboy. Mm. You know, albums I didn't think that were that great. Now he's become more, you know, conscious of his image, made a more concise album, something mm. that sounds a bit more true artistically. Yeah. And he still has the bangers as well as that. So, you know, Blinding Lights, um, Heartless to some degree. I have no idea what's happened there. It's it's definitely a blatant a blatant admission. Do you know what I'm saying? That someone has yeah. definitely said we're not gonna nominate him for what whatever reason that may be. Yeah. Um so if, yeah. If you're not nominating Blinding Lights or you're not no- nominating some of the other songs um in your eyes, I wanna say. Like, mm-hmm. if you're not nominating those, then that means you've just not been listening to what's happened this year. And that's what the Grammys is supposed to be a reflection of. Now, we're aware in certain categories, they do make mistakes, you know. But um, I just can't believe not a single nomination. If it's I a had you, are you Are you a fan of The Weeknd at all? Um, I'm not a massive fan of The Weeknd, but I do know that I haven't been able to escape blinding lights. It's just been everywhere, even mm. without, like, it's just all over the internet. Like, I heard it on TikTok first, and I didn't actually know it was by him. Yeah. See, it's, it's one of the, I just don't see, like, I just feel like if you don't, if you do that, you're not acknowledging the year that's been had, and that's not, that's not what the Grammy should be doing, which is why I think, like, Drake's most recent uh, comments on the Grammys is really interesting, and the fact that, uh, that these men are just ain't respecting what we're doing. I think it's time we make our own ceremony where the art is truly appreciated, because if you're not, Acknowledging the weekend's year, that I don't know what you're doing. But I guess it's, I, it's the onus is now on the artist to do that now, though, because mm. as as much as people are, you know, upset for the weekend and rightly so, there's still artists that are very, you know, I mean, and naturally so, over the moon that they've been nominated for the Grammys. So it's you got to be either in or out. Like the, the artists need to come together and maybe talk to another award ceremony and mm. give artists a bit more leeway on power as to who gets nominated or you know maybe bring the fans involved you know what i'm saying because you know this committee business because i know how it works you you get like a you get um enrolled every year so once so i work for a music company and they sent me an mm. email saying would you like to enroll for a grammy nomination committee will you pay like an admission each year so it's people in the industry that are voting but you know not everybody in this industry actually listens to music like that yeah so the onus needs to be on the artist, in my opinion, to just yeah. take that power away. But, I but think then again, the, yeah, go. But then again, I feel like, as you said, not a lot of people listen to music in this industry, so they're pretty much blinded. So mm. when it comes to picking certain categories uh, based on their achievements and you know the certain criteria, I feel like y- yes, you're just speaking about people just to give a general general uh, consensus and then just say yep this is what it is so mm-hmm. for example the hip-hop uh, nominations um I, I don't know why d smoke is there like i listened to the album yeah, once it's the wrong smoke it's the wrong smoke man <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> so smoke is not nominated I, I don't know you know i mean that's smoke, that, that's man. it's not to take any anything away from d smoke but it's just like mm. how do you come up with this and then more importantly, it's just like how 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 are the nominations like for, I know there's there's criteria, right? Mm. But then how are you like how are you actually selecting a focus group for this particular group? Do you know what I'm saying? So mm. and it's there's a lot that needs to be sat down and there's a lot that needs to yeah, a lot that needs to be discussed and ironed out. But they've been having this problem for several years. Mm. So I mean, I, f- I feel like we are partly the ones to blame, but at the same time, we're not we're not the whole um, reason for the actual mm. blame. Do you understand? Yeah, because I even remember what's his name, um, not his name, sorry, her name. Um, what's the lady on uh, Breakfast Club? Angela Yee. Angela Yee. Angela Yee. She was requested to join the committee, but she declined, and it's like. But this was time ago. 
It's mm. like, well, if you declined and then you're upset this year, then you should have really just accepted and been a part of that, and been a part mm. of the voting process and allowed um, a proper decision to be made so mm. that the right deserving artist can receive an accolade because they deserve it, not just because that. it's a name that's been popped out of a hat or, you know, friends in the industry that have just swayed the vote. Do you get know what I'm saying? Mm. So yeah. I feel like we are partly to blame, but not whole, wholly. It kind of, you, so your boys, BTS, they were nominated for a Grammy. And what, what category was it in? Um, best pop duo group performance. See, that's interesting because you'd, you'd obviously be over the moon and happy for them at this moment in time. But I guess you'd still be able to acknowledge the fact that I guess sometimes a Grammy gets it wrong and they haven't nominated people in the right categories or they've messed up. Yeah. Um, I think even with BTS, that nomination was literally purely for that one English song they did and it's just mm. completely alienated the Korean songs that they released and they did yeah like campaign to be nominated see that's interesting because they, they that's that's my biggest problem with the Grammys that they they get it wrong when it's so easy to get it right and I'm sure the year BTS have had that they've been everywhere you know they uh, they had a number one single on the hot 100 that they can't be yeah. ignored and then it kind of just feels like you're putting them in a category to just say, uh, here's your nomination, you know, do with it what you want sort of thing. It's not the right yeah. category. It seemed like what Tyler's issue was last year when he was like, well, what does the urban, what does urban contemporary mean? Like, you know. It means black. It means, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like, it, it just doesn't make sense. Like, you're not, doing it right and then obviously i think the weekend's been completely shut out that's political that's i think that's clear as day but getting it as wrong as they have with pop smoke not being nominated for rap album of the year even i could even make a case that i think pop smoke should be in contention for album of the year because i think what that album did was amazing his songs are everywhere cultural impact was pretty huge and obviously r.i.p so that gives it even more of a, a reason to be pushed. Dior got nominated, but I just feel like it was a, a little throwaway nomination. And that's my least favourite type of nomination. I'd rather you didn't nominate me. If you, if you substitute the D-Smoke album for Pop Smokes, then I won't be angry at the rap album list that they've got. But mm. if, 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 if Freddie Gibbs doesn't win, I'm going to be absolutely livid. I'm just saying that now. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be absolutely livid. No, this that's is the point. <laughs> Bruv, I need to give somebody their flowers. Yeah, you see, Collins, Collins has been on job when it comes to choosing music, so mm. he's put me on to Freddie Gibbs. Yeah, which I'm very thankful for. No problem. What's his name? I I, rec- I was listening to the radio and I was like, who is this guy playing this mad noise early in the morning? And I went and checked his album and I found his music on um, our playlist, MIC playlist. You can go and check that out. It's Tame and Parlor. So shout out to Collins, man. You deserve your flowers. Tame and Parlor. Uh, Tame and Parlor, yeah. man. Tame and Parlor are cold. Yeah. They're cold. They I'm I'm quite late to them though, in, to be fair, but I their past two albums I really like. And they make like quite I can't really explain their music, but they got a groove, man. Them got them mm. them white dons got soul. So <laughs> yeah. definitely, definitely, definitely soul. Shout out to Tame and Parlor and that. For sure, for sure. Yeah. All right, so next topic is, um, I don't know if you guys saw, but the comments have been a madness under the Sainsbury's advert for the Christmas Sainsbury's advert and uh, Meghan Markle's miscarriage. Um, I, sh- I don't know how to feel anymore, you know? Like, I'm, do you know what? I'm, I'm not surprised. I'm just disappointed is how I feel when I see them replies underneath it. But it's the Sainsbury's advert ain't even... I don't want to say it's not, it's just people doing normal stuff. It just so happens that the people in the advert are black. Mm-hmm. How are you saying I don't feel represented when Lidl's advert this year is a carrot? So what are you man, what are you man really saying? You know what I mean? It's just, it's ridiculous. I, I, I personally just don't, I don't get it. I, I don't see why... Know. I feel like I'm at my wit's end. <laughs> mm. Like not even I'm, I'm at my wit's end. I'm just so uh, uh, when when I re- when I heard about it, I was like, oh, I swear, mad thing. 
that's just how I feel at this point. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know, I don't, I don't know how many more examples we need for, you know, the British public to show us that they don't rate us. Do you know what I'm saying? So, mm. <laughs> and the thing is, I didn't even watch the advert after seeing the controversy. <laughs> so then, when I when I eventually saw when I eventually saw the advert, I just laughed because like, what how can you be angry at that? <laughs> like, like, you don't want to go shop at Sainsbury's because the man's cooking gravy. What? Boy, I, I, I have, I have no words. I don't know. I know you saw the replies. How did you, how did you feel? I felt like I could predict the replies before I even mm. started reading them. Like it's the same type of profile pictures, the same type of comments, same back and forth. So I really just went through them and reported most of them. Yo, yeah, right and right for you. Right, yeah, get them out of here. It's ridiculous, and I can't. The one that really hurts me more is Megan's one because mm. you just know why them men are moving the way they're moving. Like I think Megan's speaking on something that's really important, um, discussing her miscarriage, and then people have the guts to be in the comments like, oh, "Megan here again, just using it for attention." Dog, she had a miscarriage. Like mm. if she she can tell people when she's ready, a and b. Like her telling, you don't know what her telling some, um, telling the public might do for someone else. It might make someone else feel, you know, who's been through it, be like, you know what, if Megan can talk about it, so can I, or just help someone to feel better because it's like someone that uh, well respected and that high up has had a miscarriage. I just don't see how people can be in the comments complaining and saying, oh, she's back here again. Like, we know why you don't like her, but show some respect. I think there's also the issue that if she didn't say anything, it would have been made into this huge conspiracy that she's hiding a miscarriage and mm. that she's a divorce, divorcee and like people make it like a huge thing. So it, it yeah, is good. Yeah. She basically didn't have a choice. It would have had to come yeah. out. Facts. I couldn't agree more. And she had, she, I mean, when you're in that sort of light, like she has, you have to uh, unfortunately disclose a lot about your life, especially when you're married to someone who's a prince. Um, so I just think. It went, I just don't understand how people are in the comments like that. Like, they genuinely feel that way. And I don't know if that's, I just don't see how, how you can, if that makes sense. Like, it's, it's all mind boggling to me that people are out there moving like that. Yeah, they said they were attention seeking when they put down the reefs for Remembrance Day as well. And there was like, this is a photo op. Mm. But it's like, if they didn't, that everyone would be like, they're unpatriotic. They, that is genuinely a couple that can't win. Yeah, can't, you definitely can't win. Because yeah. that man got a Netflix documentary and they were like, well, why are they getting a Netflix documentary? Like, I'm going to get the bag. Like, don't worry about <laughs> what I'm doing. When the, when the crown catches up to their story, it's going to be lit. That's when I'm going to start watching it. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to get Meghan Markle to play Meghan Markle. Because <laughs> 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 she can do that. She's an actress as well. So we know she's got... She's got it in the bag. That's a fact. Plus, The Crown is with Netflix as well, and she's got a documentary coming with Netflix. Yo, I'm seeing the stars. And they're my, like... my, my thing is just that, first of all, with the Sainsbury's advert, um, I mean, I'd, I'd never... The fact that Sainsbury's did that, that's like a massive thing for us. Um, mm. But it's, it's one of them ones where it's like, oh, well thanks like that's that's absolutely great because at least it's representation mm. for you know the african black community especially the people that have been here before us so showing that you know was was a plus side for people who are complaining they're just close-minded you know right. and it's like it's, it's almost like no, nah, it's, it's not even like anything. I mean, if you have the time for it, then you have the time for it. If you want to give it the energy, then you give it the energy. And that's mm. what people want to do. With the Meghan Markle situation, that's just, that's silliness. That's stupidity and just childlike behavior. She has a miscarriage. She's telling her experience to the world because, mm. you know, essentially that's her child. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm. And some people, you know, they may have a different view of a child in the womb, you know, they may feel like that's not a child and they're very much um, pro-choice. But I don't want to get into that conversation. I'm just saying like miscarriage to some people, it's a heavy, heavy topic. And I was speaking to somebody 
a few weeks back on her having a miscarriage and she was she was super emotional by it she was like yo i had a miscarriage and those were my babies and i didn't get to see my babies so it humanizes her in in the most in the most way as possible and then mm. people are just like nah find that Bro, you shouldn't be with with uh, my man, the prince. He's no, he's not even a prince no more because of you. Blah blah blah. This, this, and that. You moved out the country. You're not even part of the the royal family anymore. Blah. It's like if you want yeah, to I give it that. the energy, then you give it the energy. But I personally don't have that time for that energy. Do you mm. know what I'm saying? It's in one one. It's like it goes in one ear, then it comes out the other. For me, when I yeah. hear like that negativity and that demonization of just an individual mm. even even the black stuff like for me that was like oh that's really good that's really nice they're moving forward at least they're recognizing and acknowledging that yes there's not just white people in this nation but other people they just see white and that's how they see it that's so, how they view life and i think that is very interesting when you brought up about uh miscarriages and the fact that i think the hardest thing is is the fact you've got your mind mentally prepared to start loving something and really ready to uh, bring something into the world and that opportunity is snatched from you, I think that's why it needs to be discussed because mentally that's, that's torture really, that to be so prepared to bring something into the world only for it to be taken away from you, not for something, not for anything you did wrong, just because, you know, for whatever complications came about, that's painful and needs to be discussed. Um, yeah. I was going to say, have you seen something? But I think just that earlier. Um, seen something as in the reply. Yeah, well, no, I thought you were going to say, have you seen something? But don't worry. Oh, That's yeah, I did. did. Um, have you seen the stuff of Tesco? Well, oh, what? Tesco had, they were going to put a black person in yeah. the advert, saw the reaction, uh, yeah, same yeah, 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 he's yeah. got, and they said, yeah, we, want, we don't want none of that. Wow. We want no parts. I hear it. <laughs> <laughs> I hear it. Yo, that's now nah, that's gross. Come on, do it with your chest, boy. Put, 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 put black people in adverts with your chest. That's that's what that's what I'm going with. <laughs> that's the hashtag. <laughs> now, don't half and half it, because obviously, then man, I think the actors came out and said, "Yeah, we filmed this really lovely scene, and it got taken out." And I don't like. I don't even. Feel, I think Sainsbury's um, Tesco's advert would have been better for it. Tesco's advert was more of a a diverse way of people anyway. So theirs, I don't think, would have seen the same backlash. But yeah, no, the fact that, that Tesco did that, that's disgusting. Yeah, I think they did one for Ramadan, and it had a massive backlash because it was during lockdown, and it was a really? month teaching her son how to cook through like FaceTime, mm. and the comments were disgusting. It was just like, who is this for? Blah, blah, blah. Who's this for? <laughs> they, they told you. They start it's throwing like that. statistics <laughs> out and it's just like, okay, close your eyes. Oh God. I hate when they do that and it's like, well, only the, the, the percent of the population is Muslim. So who's this for? Like people want to see themselves on TV and just embrace different cultures. And you never know that, that mum teaching her son over um, FaceTime, you could learn something. So yeah. I, I'm I, I'm just disappointed in the fact that people in this country still have that opinion. Yeah, they're still going to order like biryani anyway. It just bothers a... them seeing a family. <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> That's yo, it's, it's sickening really. When you, I can't believe that people behave like this and just think this is the right way to, to go about things. But we, all we can do is hope for change. And I think the more these adverts happen, you know. The, the more that I think people will just you know get used to it um, so th these major companies have to keep doing these adverts and you know what if them man say hey, I'm, I'm not going to eat um, I'm not going to go buy food at Sainsbury's then so be it I don't want to be in the same place as them they say I'm not going to go shop at Tesco all of them are going to go hungry anyway because you're going to be out of places to shop that's a fact just it is really fact. weird though because the company that made the Sainsbury's Sainsbury's advert is the same one that makes the night ones. So they, they've always made multicultural adverts. I see. And those never get a backlash. But when it was like Sainsbury's, so Yeah, you, you know them man are there like, it's my Sainsbury's, can't believe they're doing this. <laughs> that's, like, <laughs> that's like, 
<laughs> That's why they're upset. Oh, I can't believe it. It's my sign for you. Because like, I feel like B11 has put a battery in their back, innit? They feel like... But, well, you know what? They yeah. said uh, race relations have been hindered, or I don't know, I'm wording this wrong, but I've been impacted 51%. So yes, of course. You know, we, we was out in the summer, uh, fighting for our rights, and these men didn't like it so much. So they did another um, protest after our one and said, "Yo, you might need to respect us." Come on. No, it's not it. even. It's it's not even fighting for our rights. We're just fighting to be humanized. That's mm. it. That's all. We're they didn't like for. that. Yeah, because they're yeah. like, oh. What are you really fighting for? This, this, and that. Like, oh, yeah, we've got problems as well. Yeah, well, you have to understand there are other issues mm. that people are dealing with on a daily basis. Yeah. And you don't have to deal with those issues. Um, but, you know, BLM mm. as an organization, and I can talk about that, but not today, not, not, not today, right <laughs> now. But yeah. <laughs> it's heavy. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, I just hope that they, they was. Like, I, my hope is that more companies do these sort of ads, put these sort of ads on TV, and everything is diverse. Like, even um, McDonald's ad for Christmas this year, it seems to take a bit of a mental health sort of approach with a little boy who's really down. And I'm not, I mean, the advert kind of does end a bit like, oh, McDonald's fixes, uh, like, depression. But, you know, it's a, it's a story that needs to be told. So I do, I do just hope that going forward, all, um, everyone's represented in adverts going forward and companies don't shy away just because of this one incident with Sainsbury's. Yeah, fingers crossed, man. It's, it's important, especially like for kids, because mm. to be able to, be able, right. to, be able to say, see yourself on TV, it does something to the mind, you know, it gives you, you know, mm. the ideology that you're not like a minority, even though we technically are, but you know, yeah. it's good to have representation. Facts. All right, so uh, it's nearly the end of the year. I think we've got about five more weeks, five, four, yeah, about five more weeks until the end of the year. So I just wanted to know if there's, and what has been a weird year for everyone, um, if there's been some moments or something you've come across that's made you really laugh. Hmm. That's a good question. Now, I'll, I'll say my two, um, and they both, you know what, shouts out to Billy Forbes, because she's both moments. Um, first one being spray on jeans. I couldn't believe it when she came on. So, it can, just for a bit of backstory, um, we had a guest come on, um, and Collins was talking about fashion and how back in the day, uh, boys used to wear spray on jeans, and that's how tight their jeans were. But uh, Billy thought that when we said spray on jeans, she actually meant like she thought boys were painting jeans on, basically. <laughs> so, I mean, the laugh that that gave us was hilarious. And then yesterday, I was given, I gave her a question in our quiz, and I said, um, "Name the Freddie Mercury biopic, uh, which just means the biographical film, basically." But she was like adamant. It was a, I was talking about Instagram and what his bio picture was. Um, so she kept saying, oh, it, must be, it just must be a picture of himself. That's what it is. But obviously the correct answer was um, for Human Rhapsody. So thank you for Billy for giving me my two funniest moments this year, hands down. Um, I think one of mine might be just Chet Hanks in general. Just every time he <laughs> pops up on my feed, <laughs> he's just doing something crazy, you know. That boy is different, man. He's just I mean, built he's different. Just we discussed it yesterday. I don't know how he's Tom Hanks' son, but we love it. I, the, ma I, the Matrix has glitched for him to come out the way he's come <laughs> out. I don't understand. He's, he's special. And them videos are hilarious. They lend themselves to so many great and funny moments. I am a massive fan. I hope he goes on to either make music or do films. <laughs> <laughs> Chet Hanks speaking reminds me of that scene. Um, I don't know. It's the Brad Pitt scene. And he comes yes. in and he goes, everything gone be re. <laughs> I thought that was fake. <laughs> <laughs> so did I. Oh my oh, god. A real scene. Uh, I feel sick. I can't believe that was actually real. I thought someone dubbed it. <laughs> nah, he did not even try. He's going to jail for that accent. <laughs> 
Nah, that is that Brad Pitt scene is upper echelon. Iman, you got a funny moment from this year? I'm still thinking. I'm mm. still thinking. Um, yeah, it's it's quite hard. Uh, Ikran can give a few examples as I still think because there's really uh-huh. plenty of things that I've been it is, it is thinking tough. too. It is I'm tough. not going to lie. But, um, it's a tough thing to think about. I think more broadly, I've just become obsessed with TikTok. That does lend itself to some funny moments. I will not. Yeah, the humor is so dark. It's funny. <laughs> it's... What's the What's the best TikTok you come across recently? Oh. oh my god, my my brain just my brain just went blank. I can't think. Do you know what's really good? British TikToks. Like, if you get the chance, just go through like on YouTube British TikToks, and it's basically our school ex. Experience that school experiences in the UK um, and the things that you just remember. Uh, so, for example, like uh, uh, getting sent out of class and being like, "Why am I being sent out for?" Those sort of things it lend itself very well to. That Seen one humor. with a uh, where it's like food tech, where you're like, "Mummy, I didn't, I didn't <laughs> buy my my, yeah. my ingredients," and he's like, "When is it due? <laughs> Tomorrow." Tomorrow. <laughs> the paper towel ones. It's like yeah, they've broken something. They're like. Psh. And suddenly they're fine. <laughs> <laughs> it really makes people um, like think outside the box, man. I love it. It's, it's good. It does. I think it's it is it's the the best thing since Vine. I'd say. I think Vine is in the class of its own, but it's a very good follow up to Vine. I think. I think and, the first, um, the two things I've seen. It's really recent, but. Um, I'm not just going to say it's for the whole entire year, but it's just really recent. So this, mm. the stuff that I've seen maybe this month is um, If the Shoe Fits and also They've given us a lot of good that moments. just happened mm. this morning. Well, it's uh, Nate Robertson. Oh, um, yo, banged. that knockout he was went sleep. He went sleep. <laughs> and um, Damn. Yo. Yeah. That's I mean, I, I, I tried to... No, it it didn't make me. You know what? I just laughed at all the other memes. I, the, oh. the fight itself is completely <laughs> different because I watched the fight and I was like, "Mate, you're doing it all wrong." And mm. that's when Jake Paul just had to say, "You know what? Let me just box with this guy and see what happens." And he did it three times. He knocked him on the floor three times, and then the third time Jeez. was a devastating one where he just he was yeah. out like a light. Word to Drake. Yeah, that honestly, was honestly, no, no, that that was it was it was very bad the way he was moving. Because honestly, it was just it was he was trying to knock him out, but it was like, me, this is there's a play, there's a playbook to knocking somebody out. You jab, you move around, you make sure you're hitting them to make sure they get tired, and then you knock them mm. out. But he was just going for it straight away, and because he's a basketball player, he's got fast switch muscles. He's a three-time dunk competition. Why not? Do you get what I'm saying? It's just yeah. like, slow down. And he didn't. And he got, it was twice. It was like, big man, if you do not pay attention to what you're doing, you're going to get knocked out. For so a second round, just on his back, on his, on his face with his dunks. And it's like, bro. With his dunks. <laughs> it was mad. It was mad. But hey, with the shoe fits, if the shoe fits, is a, sorry? It was. Was he? Oh my god, this year's been low. I was yeah. I was adamant who's Jordan again was last year. Oh my god. It must have been surely, right? This year. Jordan. Who's Jordan again? Because we spoke about it on this on this on this podcast, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was this year. Yeah, it was this Jeez. year. Jeez. Yo. But like um What a year. No, no, that 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 this recent episode well, this recent uh season, um or if the shoe fits was really funny, but then it was also strange because the, the the white girl as well, the the one that owns the business. If I, if if I was there, I would have given her a lesson properly of like what light skinned people actually are. X Y and Z. This is that. You, did you think it was fetishism from her? Did you get that vibe? No, it's just that I'm. Well, they're not. None of them are light skinned. It's just that four of them are light skinned. And she's saying I like light, light skinned niggas. It's like. Right. Then what's the point of you being here? Do you get what I'm saying? It's like, who did you really want? And then for you to say that, I did, there's just a bunch of stuff I can say about this lady, but 
on like the did most respectful way. Huh? Did it make you feel uncomfortable watching it? Yeah, because it's like you're gonna say you only like light skinned people. So it's like if a, if a man who's light skinned, to be honest, like me, I don't have a type. But if a light skinned uh, man walks in, you're, you're going to just, you're just gonna fall in love. And then what if mm. he does you dirty? Now you like you don't, you don't like light skinned people. It's it's bare stuff I can say about that individual. But nah, I mean the whole see the whole season that season was funny to me. So I really enjoyed it. This is so you're putting a lot of uh, really funny people. Like, I didn't even know Conan was that funny, but he. I mean, he does lend himself to some funny moments. The show is good. What they managed to create over there is, is, is very entertaining. And they've given us some great moments. So I'm looking forward to what else they have to give as well. But yeah, no, it's good that we've all had those moments. It's, it's always important to find something funny. Actually, another thing that was funny this year same. was, was uh, Boris Johnson when he caught COVID. That was funny. Too. How is that, that funny? <laughs> No, that was funny to me because oh it's God. like, oh yeah, I was out here shaking hands, I was out here doing this, and then next thing you're on a, on a freaking. Okay, stretcher. yeah, that, that, I guess that that's. <laughs> Yo, he's trying to get the secret service on us. Yeah, <laughs> but the way he went about it was that's ridiculous. How can you be the president? Do you know what they're both jokes? Because Trump got it and um, Boris got it, and their man were just moving, no regard for anyone else. Trump was in, uh, Boris was in a hospital with um, people who had it and he was just like, yo, I'm going to do what I want. You know, forget the rules that I've put in place. I'm going to do what I want. You shouldn't be surprised that you got it. Yeah. 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 But, yeah. Now, um, I guess if anyone's got any other funny moments. No, man. No, I can't think of any. Not funny per se, but I think EastEnders just got really good this year. <laughs> What's happening in it? <laughs> Please explain. Should I watch for Christmas? What? Should I, watch, should I start getting ready for Christmas now? Yeah, I feel like you should go back the past two weeks as well, because okay. I don't want to spoil it, but everybody's doing crime. <laughs> everyone's, on, the everyone's on booting. Nah, that's <laughs> funny. <laughs> Please explain further. Basically, um, Kush is involved with Phil and Kat, and the only person against them is Ian. It's just such a mess, and Ian's going to be taken out of EastEnders for a bit. There's like apparently going to be a plot line where he gets attacked. But I don't know how oh, yet. Yeah. But he's the like he's the OG character from the first episode, so mm. that's supposed to be a big deal. He's also very yeah. skinny now. If you haven't seen him for a while, oh really? Yeah, I heard he lost a lot of weight. Yeah, and he got really upset because what's her name rejected him. Yeah, basically. But the thing is, he basically killed her son. So what? There was wow. that anniversary episode where they went on a boat on the Thames. Oh, when he left him, minute. He locked him in. <laughs> Because but he, was a menace. Yeah, he basically was online getting the alt right to attack um his son. So because he became Muslim in it. Oh wow. That's oh, so Wait, who, <laughs> whose son became Muslim? Ian's. Isn't Ian's son kill James? Yeah, so when he was in prison, he converted. Maza. Yeah. Yo, he said this is cooking, you know. Hey, it might have to be a, it might have to be an omnibus thing for me. I'm not gonna lie. Omnibus looking omnibus looking kind of you can catch up because it was gone for most of lockdown. So Jeez. Yo, okay. that's a storyline and a half. So what do you think is gonna happen at Christmas, which is the most important time in EastEnders' calendar year? I think it's just been escalating so much. I'm not sure where they're gonna be. Someone's gonna <laughs> die, <laughs> as always. Yeah. Someone's gonna die of COVID. <laughs> COVID's not in it. Of. No, COVID's not mentioned. Well, they're not wearing masks and, and that. Like, it just no. doesn't exist. They have this weird social distancing going on, where they're getting oh, like relatives it? and friends in bubbles to play like the person that comes into contact with oh, that's them. That's quite smart, actually. But yeah. Okay. That's, that is clever. And what are they all awkwardly standing like two meters apart? Yeah. Because I damn near ruined towers. <laughs> because when you know it, you're like shit. Yeah. <laughs> Tower was gross with it, like. They'd be like, oh, uh, you two have a conversation and say someone's here, someone's on the other side of the room and they might as well just be shouting at each other. It was, it's not a good look, but I guess rules are rules. But it does make, I guess it makes filming very difficult. 
Yeah, their makeup's changed a bit as well because I guess they're doing their own. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> that, that must be leading to some bad looks <laughs> no i think some people have genuinely improved okay it's the matter because you know your face it? isn't it i guess uh, so that's got something to do with it i mean they've done some really good storylines this year i was really impressed like i dipped in and out of the one about the lady with her domestic violence one she's now on i'm a celebrity um I oh yeah, Shan- the mixed face lady. Chantal. Mm. She died. <laughs> I'm That's not going to tell her, but but I'm not. Uh, actually, <laughs> so I say how. Demi, what the hell? Laugh. <laughs> no, no, it's because the way she said she died. She died. Just but the thing is, <laughs> if you watch, <laughs> now I feel bad. <laughs> if you watch the episode, you're going to be like, what? Is it the one where she like? I think I might have saw this on Gogglebox, funnily enough. And like, she gets killed and then the guy, is it by like a, a guy? Her husband, yeah. And then he comes back and pretends that she killed herself or something like that. It's like it was accidental, yeah. Yes, yes, I saw that clip. Well, she like fell in the dishwasher, innit? Yeah. Yeah, it was wild. She tripped on like a, <laughs> a toy. I'm not trying to write anymore. <laughs> he goes uh, out, goes uh, into well, the pub, gets milk, glass milk, to be sure that he can drop it. It's all very like weird, and he's a lawyer, so it's just crazy. What is he going to defend himself? Is he is he a prime suspect in her death, or is it just? Oh, that's away? that's been wrapped up. He he got away with it. Shit! And what he's just walking around the square like, yo, this is everybody me. feels sorry for him because you know. Nah. He's a her dad was a little bit suspicious about it though. Like he had his. Oh, yeah, he is because um, the guy that she was working for, he liked her, and they were supposed to escape together that day. She wait. It was a. I want to say it was a um a Sikh guy. Yeah, yeah. Because they knew each other from their childhood. Mm. And he was he was gonna help her escape, but homeboy clocked on. Uh, he so he made him set off the alarm or something like that. Yeah, he accidentally set off the alarm. He still is cooking, you know. I can't lie. I'm back in. I'm back. I'm back. Yeah. That dish was a bit dumb, but everything else, I'm here for. It sounds like it's good. Yeah. Uh, well, that's your little EastEnders breakdown. <laughs> that's the first time I've had that on here. <laughs> <laughs> Cause we might have to go away and then come back and be like, this if you haven't been watching, watching, <laughs> what you do need to know is that Denise, you know, Denise and Phil had a child, right? Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Seriously? A few, years ago, a few years ago, yeah. Denise became an alcoholic. They were alcoholic together. They had a child. She gave up for adoption. The child is back now. The child is back. The real is back. The real is back. Uh, yeah, I'm back. Omnibus thing. I mean, let me search this right now. <laughs> Omnibus thing. Oh, it's happened years ago, but yeah. <laughs> How do you, is it, have they really casted the child well? It, I'm assuming they just the child's still a baby. Still, yeah, it's still oh, a... Fair. You can't... It's still like a toddler. It's not a baby. So why did, what, has Denise gone and been like, Yo, I, wanna, I want to take care of it now? Do you want me to tell you what happened? Yeah, spoil it, spoil it, spoil it, spoil it, spoil it. So basically, the family she gave the son to and died, because turns out they're also in a bad family, like a mafia type of situation. Oh, shit. Jeez. Um, so the grandmother tries to keep the child, but somehow she knows about Phil and his dodgy dealings, and he knows about her dodgy dealings. And then Callum, who's Ben's husband, fiance, whatever, he... Mm. Um, works with the police, he's a police officer, and he kind yes. of sets her up and whatever, and that's how they get to keep the son. But basically, that that child was adopted by a dodgy family. Yo, it, honestly, it's just gross. Nothing, they're, they're... Nothing, fa- nothing happy ever happens in that show, now I really think about it. <laughs> no, nothing makes sense. Jack and Denise were a couple, and that was like... Jack and cute. Denise? Yeah. That makes zero to no sense. <laughs> Entertaining, isn't it? Mm. Ooh, Kush as well. Or have I made that out? Um, I think she was. I think Denise has somehow been with almost everyone. Yes, she this girl. <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, that is insane. Well, you know what? You, you've done extend as a favour because you might have gotten two new viewers. I might have yeah. to spin this coupon to see what I missed out. 
It's just too many days. If they dropped it down to two, I think I could hack it. But they did during lo- if just before they ran out of episodes. It was like two, was that, two or three. Was that more digestible? No, it was more confusing because you know on Fridays you always knew it was a big episode, but then you start oh, losing yeah, track yeah. of what is Friday and what is Monday. Mm. Mm. So what what days did they drop? Monday and Friday. No, they were doing it on Monday and Tuesday. Monday and Tuesday. But now it's everything uh, again. Okay. But it moves really slow because they have all the like distant scenes. Mm. Ah, well, I'll give it a try, especially if it, there's not much to catch up on then as well. Yeah. Uh, thank you for that breakdown. That was no problem. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so enlightened. <laughs> um. All right. It can tell the people where they can find you online. On Twitter, it's literally just my first name, at Ikran. Um, and on Instagram, it's Ikran DD. Two Ds. <laughs> Two Ds. Thank you for that. Um, thank you once again for coming on. You've been great. And that EastEnders breakdown, that's, that's a memory. Um, Listen, I'm just, just trying to collect more EastEnders. <laughs> <laughs> just the way you said she died, that's made my day. That was hilarious. Um, but yeah, uh, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, BTS Army, we're, we're joining. We're joining. We're part of Army now. What's, what are you saying? Yeah, we are. Send you my starter pack. I have a starter pack. <laughs> yeah, we need our starter pack. We gotta pull bring right. us in. BTS is gonna be the artwork for this week. <laughs> it has to be done. Yeah, why not? Why not? Respect to the boys. Um, but other than that, thank you so much again, Nick Ram, for yeah, coming. We appreciate on. you. Thank you. Thank you Thanks for much. having me. No Always problem. a pleasure. All right. Take care. Bye, everyone. All right. Bye, guys.